The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we celebrate our Mass today, especially for the soul of Richard Nichols. And we come together on this beautiful day to do the most important thing we'll do all weekend. Celebrate the sacred mysteries of God's love in our midst. And as always, first we pause and call to mind that we're sinners. We need the Lord. We don't always trust God as the gospel will call us to do. And we place ourselves in God's hands, asking for pardon and strength. You came to bring us life to the fullest, Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. You show us the way to eternal life, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting. And we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as we pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people. Amen. We glorify you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, which and may we merit to enter into the heavenly inheritance that you have promised us through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The Word of the Lord. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness.
kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness. Grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the crowds had been filled, Jesus insisted that his disciples get into the boat and precede him to the other side of the lake. When he had sent them away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray remaining there alone as evening drew on. Meanwhile, the boat, already several hundred yards out from the shore, was being tossed about in the waves raised by strong headwinds. At about three in the morning, he came walking toward them on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said. And in their fear, they began to cry out. Jesus hastened to reassure them, Get hold of yourselves. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter spoke up and said, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you across the water. Come, he said. So Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water, moving toward Jesus. But when he perceived how strong the wind was, becoming frightened, he began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus at once stretched out his hand and caught him. How little faith you have, he exclaimed. Why did you fault? Once they had climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat showed him reverence, declaring, Beyond doubt, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I didn't hear about Annabeth's birthday. Does anybody have a birthday this weekend or next week that you wouldn't mind standing up and congratulate? Right here, happy birthday. Well, we do have a wedding anniversary. Um, so our mass coordinator, and Chris, and you've been married for 32 years. You may kiss the bride. Now, I just want to announce folks that are watching uh, at home, Joe and Barbara Peters. They're celebrating, they just this week celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. <laughs> you can hear everybody's clapping for you. Obviously, 60 years ago, you meant what you said, for better, for worse, and sickness and health. So, congratulations. And you have to do something special for each other. Um, now, we don't want to leave anyone out. Does anybody else have a wedding anniversary this weekend or next week? Okay. Well, <clears throat> just to let you know that next Saturday is August 15th. That is that holy day of obligation that many people miss in the middle of the summer. And <clears throat> this year, it's not a holy day of obligation. It falls on a Saturday or a Monday. But it's still a holy day, an important day, so we will have a mass that morning, this coming Saturday morning at 9 a.m. like our morning masses for this, to celebrate together the Feast of the Assumption. Also, please take a bulletin home with you. There's a lot of important things in there. It's time to register our children, grandchildren for faith formation, for religious education. It'll be done a little differently. The sacrament graves will meet here in person every other week. We're splitting up the, the classes so that we have half each so we can keep that social distancing. But besides first communion confirmation, the other ones are, are online for now. And we're doing family catechesis, so all the details are in there, but please register so we know how many books to order. And we order one for the child and one for the parent because it's family categories. Um, also, in there is this wonderful opportunity for adult Catholic education. The diocese has teamed with University of Dayton, run by the Marianists, the Society of Mary. And <clears throat> the first course is free, so you can actually get three college credits free. Um, and so, these will be wonderful to take advantage of that opportunity. The diocese knows that there aren't as many things going on, Bible studies, um, prayer groups, so this is a way to still grow in our faith during this strange time. And the Knights of Columbus gave out the baby bottles. If you need another one, just see them with, uh, there in, in the comments, the narthex. And they, we need, we're asking if you could bring them here either this weekend or this weekend. And Chris Lester has something special happening next weekend. He won't be with us for a while. He'll be starting at the seminary. The seminary is St. Vincent and Paul Seminary in Point Beach, Florida. And <clears throat> so he'll be leaving Saturday. We can have a going away party like we usually do when somebody says it's January, but and because of COVID-19, we can't have the social events. But please pray for him. We will put his contact information in the bulletin. And Chris, we thank you for all that you helped us with at this time. You've been a tremendous help. So we <laughs> Well, thanks for sending me little chuckles and things. I have two of them to share with you that you sent me recently past week or two. This one says, a priest one Sunday was giving a fire and brimstone homily and proclaimed, every member of this parish will one day die and face final judgment. Glancing down at the front pew, the priest saw a woman with a big smile on her face. And 
And he repeated the same death and judgment, uh, saying, every member of this parish will one day die and be judged. And the woman smiled even more. And when he repeated it a third time, the woman began laughing. So the priest stopped preaching and turned to that woman in the first pew and said, he shouted, Madam, what's so funny? And the woman said, But Father, I'm not from this parish. <laughs> well, this one says, it's, A minister, a priest, and a rabbi were out fishing in the middle of a lake. The minister told his colleagues, I left my fishing rod in the car. I'll be right back. He went out of the boat, walked across the water to the beach, went to his car, and walked back across the lake and got into the boat. The rabbi stared at this in amazement. 30 minutes later, the rabbi said, I need to go to my car. He got out of the boat, walked across the water to the shore and his car, and walked back across the water and got into the boat. The Catholic priest was dumbfounded. The priest kept thinking, my faith is as great as theirs. And I, I'm saying this because of our gospel. And so he spoke up and said, I need to get something to drink. There's a refreshment stand on the beach. He stood up, put his, his feet on the water, and splash went straight down. The rabbi and minister helped fish him back into the boat. And he was embarrassed, not to mention wet. But he knew he could do it if the other two could. So he stood up again, stepped out of the boat, and splashed into the water. Again, he was dragged out and decided a third time, he stepped onto the water and went kaplunk right down. And so the rabbi turned to the minister and asked, do you think we should show him where the rocks are? <laughs> I thought it was in, in light of my well, in light of that powerful gospel, I have a question. Have you ever walked on water? Now, I don't mean have you stepped out onto H2O, but have you done something that seemingly is impossible? That's what Peter did. He did something that um, everybody would think is impossible. Why did he do that? Because Jesus called him. And we're a lot like St. Peter. He's so human, we can relate to the rock on which the church is built because his greatness, his power comes from the Lord, not him. And the gospel says the wind was against them. Well, sometimes it doesn't seem like everything's against us some days, right? And it was a very stormy time. Well, life is stormy, isn't it? Some of us might be going through a big storm right now in our lives. And in the Sea of Galilee, it happened a lot. If you know geography, the lowest spot on earth is on the edge of Israel. It's the Dead Sea. And the Sea of Galilee is 600 feet below sea level. And then the Jordan River drains out of it into the Dead Sea. So this is the lowest part on earth. And winds would come through throughout the land and then go down into that bowl where the Sea of Galilee is. And it was a large lake, but it wasn't huge like our great lakes. And so often these storms would just whip up. Well, our lives are storming too hard. And um, we hear Jesus calling them to do the impossible, or what we think is impossible. Well, let me give you a couple of examples on people who have to do that. Laura was a young woman, very smart. She just started her first job. She graduated from uh, college. She had the whole world in front of her. And then one day she found out that she was pregnant. She hadn't been trying to keep uh, abstaining until marriage. And she could easily get rid of her problem. 
But she heard the voice of Jesus calling her to do the right thing. And she got out of the boat and walked on. Bill was a young systems analyst, a uh, computer whiz. And he had a, a pretty good job. He was waiting for the next raise so that he and his wife could buy a bigger house in a better neighborhood. And then there was a staff meeting and the boss wanted them all to do something that he knew was dishonest and would be cruel and step on other people. And he didn't know what to do. And he heard that voice of Jesus calling him, do the right thing. And he followed the Lord and walked on board. Or Liz was a wonderful mother of two young children and she was married about 10 years and they were having little, some little problems, but her husband didn't come home one night. And the next morning he called her and told her that he wants a divorce, he doesn't love her anymore, he has a younger woman. And Liz had her whole life geared in this one direction and now what? But she heard that voice of Jesus saying, trust me, and she walked on board. Well, storms of life come upon us unexpectedly all the time. And they threaten to drown us. And we don't know how we're going to get through. We're forced, as, as St. Peter did, in a sense, to walk on water. How do we get through these storms of life? Well, we do what Peter did. He was fine when he kept looking at Jesus. But what happened? He got out of the boat, was looking at Jesus, but then he looked at the problems. Gee, this wind is strong. Gee, these waves are big. Gee, I'm walking on water. And then what happened? He started to sink. He got that sinking feeling. Well, don't we at times in our storms get that sinking feeling too? <clears throat> A depression, discouragement. Everything seems to be black and hopeless and impossible. Well, when we, this happens, when we fall into that trap, getting that sinking feeling, what do we do? What Peter did. He called out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately was there. Jesus is Emmanuel. And that name Emmanuel means what in English? Right, God is with us always. And he immediately said, oh, man of little faith, why didn't you trust? Um, and Remember, the name Jesus in Hebrew means God saves. And so the Lord is always there to help us. Well, every one of us are a better person because we walked on water a little bit. We trusted in the Lord and followed that call of the Lord. Well, we can't stop the storms in life from coming. I wish I had a magic wand that I could raise it over everybody's head, you all also at home, and then there would be no more storms. But we can't do that. But the key to survival though, not just survival, the key to flourishing, that when we go through the struggles of life, we end up being better people for it and stronger in our faith for it. The key is Jesus. Remember, St. Peter was doing the seemingly impossible thing when he looked at Jesus. It was when he took his eyes off the Lord and focused on the problems that he began to see. Well, may you and I this week, and we take one day at a time, one week at a time, well, as we go through the next week until we meet again, may we keep this gospel in mind. May we give Lord, the Lord that holy trust and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus as we're going through the ups and downs of life. Then the Lord will always be with us, but if we focus on the problems and get that sinking feeling, then what do we do? The same thing as St. Peter, the rock on which the church is built. We say, Lord, save me. God always will, and he'll call us to greater trust. So may we give the Lord in our storminess this week, one day at a time, 
Let's keep this gospel in mind and trust in the Lord. And I'll just end with a little something. There's a nun in Omaha, Nebraska, who taught high school for many years, Sister Mary Christelle Macaluso. And her students, she was always cheerful and um, optimistic, loving the Lord. And the students called her the fun nun. And she said, look around us, be distressed. Look within us, get depressed. But look to Jesus and be at rest. And now we stand and together as a family, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We ask all these prayers in great faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught, I'm sorry, be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us and all, us in all things but sin. So that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heavens. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of chapel, together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy.
Welcome him into the light of your feet. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, Saint Dominic, who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now we stand for the Lord's Prayer. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. This is Jesus, our strength. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Now, just a reminder to uh, please keep that six foot distance and when you come to communion, lower your mask or below your lips. And let's try to remember, be patient, and we come to, com to communion like at a wedding. The first few goes up, after that the second one, and so on. Um, this way we won't bunch up. Let us stand and pray. 
May the communion of me in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our mass is ended. Let us go forth to proclaim the gospel.